Hi, my name is Andy Tidy and welcome back to another episode of Canal Hunter. This is series eight and in this series we're attempting to identify the original line of the James Brindley engineered Birmingham Canal as it stretched from Birmingham through to Wolverhampton. In this episode, episode three, we're going to be following the winding loops of Brindley's original 1769 route from Birmingham through to Smethwick. Decades later, in 1827, Telford built what is still called the New Main Line, which is now 200 years old. This canal is as arrow straight as Brindley's was winding. In fact, when Telford came to survey Brindley's original route, he described it as a crooked ditch. Telford's new route forged a path straight through the bends of the old Brindley Canal, and at a stroke, the new loops were formed. Remnants of the old waterway, which quickly became backwaters, surviving just to serve the industry which had grown up along the banks. The proximity of these two canals can be a bit confusing, but essentially if it's windy it's Brindley's original 1769 canal. If it's a straight canal then it's going to be Telford's 1827 new main line. And here in the industrial heartland the original canal had been so successful that every adjacent bit of land had been built on in the intervening 50 years. In the old stretch between Old Turn Junction and Smethwick Junctions, the carving out of the new line created ten new junctions, of which five were crossovers. And whilst they both start and finish on the same old line, there are only a few hundred yards of the original canal incorporated into Telford's. Well, in the last episode, we travelled the Ouzel's Loop, Brindley's route in and out of Birmingham. And today we're going to pick up where we left off, and we're going to head out to Smethwick following Brindley's sinuous route all the way. The urban spread in this area is relentless. Houses and flats are creeping out further and further into the old industrial heartlands. In some ways we're entering a third era for this canal, because for the first 100 years of its operation it was all heavy industry. That was destroyed in the Second World War and replaced by light industry, and that in turn has now given way to redevelopment for urban residential housing. Well the next loop we're going to look at is the Icknell Port Loop. It's right behind me and is currently the largest urban development area in Birmingham. But in Brindley's day it was just a case of following the contours. So he followed the contour and it took him round by a small pool in a park called Rotten Park. These days you'd know it as Rotten Park Reservoir. In time the area grew up and prospered. Its centre became filled with boatyards, tube works, sawmills, rolling mills and glass works. These days the ramparts of the Rotten Park Reservoir which I'm standing on stand high above the CRT works which occupy the site at the end of the loop. But when the canal was built this was just the roach pool in Rotten Park. It was only later excavated by Thomas Telford to form a reservoir. Today the dam wall is a thousand feet long, 33 feet high and it holds back 300 million gallons of water which still feed into the local canal network and is filled with water from the local drainage system. Plus there is a feeder down from the pools at Titford. When the reservoir dam was raised to its current level they also created a feeder channel which fed back north to the new Smethwick summit but that was all long in the future as far as James Brindley was concerned. From his perspective he had no need of a reservoir here. For him this pound was simply a sump the water flowed down from the Smethwick locks and if it wasn't going to be pumped back up to the top it was merely flushed away over the weirs into the local watercourses. Now my plan was to get images of the Igneal port loop as we travelled on our boats in September with some cracking drone shots of the boats crossing the new main line. But as we cruised around here the heavens opened and we were absolutely deluged with a massive thunderstorm so a change of plan and we will explore them by drone. And if you travel these reclusive loops yourself, it's very easy to forget that the new main line exists, only realising that you're crossing it when you find yourself halfway out across the main channel. One minute you're in the Ickville Port Loop, the next minute you're in the Soho Loop, the longest of the still navigable Brindley Loops.
halfway along the Soho Loop, there is the Soho Branch. The one really significant branch that was built in the days of Brindley. And it was built to get into Matthew Bolton's manufactory, an old fashioned way of describing a factory. Now, back in the day, this area was a mass of bedstead manufacturers, ironworks, chemical works, corrugated works, nail makers, paint manufacturers, to name just a few of the trades. The area specialised in the manufacture of metal objects and they all needed coal to fire their furnaces. The pollution around here must have been horrendous. It's therefore slightly strange that alongside all this industry, many of the city's institutions became sited. On the island created by the old and new main lines, there was the workhouse, and immediately north of the Hockley Port, there was the isolation and the fever hospital, leading to, as the old maps put it, the Borough Lunatic Asylum, the hospital, and then the prison. These days, the function is served by the city hospital, known to generation of Brummies as Dudley Road. And that brings us here to the Soho branch and the Hockley Port. This arm was significant because it led into Matthew Bolton's manufactory. He was a prime mover and shaker of the day, and along with James Watt, he invented the steam engines, which pretty much powered the Industrial Revolution. The branch was later extended to include two arms, and it became known as the Hockley Goods Yard, one of the largest and busiest canal railway interchange sites where goods came and went from the last mile to the factories. These days the arms have been made into residential moorings, and a small basin in the middle makes a handy dry dock. These days just the interchange basins remain as a reminder of the canal heritage. The remainder up to Matthew Bolton's manufactory has all been filled in the only telltale remnant being a road called Wharf Road. Now, I can't fly the drone from here to Winston Green Junction because it takes us past Winston Green Prison. And of course, no drones, otherwise they'll think I'm delivering a baggie and we wouldn't want that. Before the new canal was dug by Telford, the old line crossed to the west, and initially it formed another loop. The new canal included a toll station and the southern entrance to the Cape Loop was soon closed up 
because the canny boaters realised they could simply go around the loop and avoid paying the fee. The northern part of the loop remained in water and it became the Cape Arm. In recent years the site has been transformed into the new Metropolitan Hospital, a new facility built to replace the old aspects of City Hospital on the other side of the canal. From here the line of the wavering original canal starts to get closer and closer to the new, but still the tracks diverge almost constantly. From the Cape Arm the old line switches to the eastern side, looping around the back of the old Avery site to rejoin the canal just south of Rabone Road. But even here, it shrugs off the old and goes off into another long lost loop which sits underneath Cornwall Industrial Estate, before sliding again onto the main line just at Smethwick Junction. Looking back at the line into Birmingham, the old line has done nothing but flit to and fro across the new canal track. The only real lengths where the two combine is a few hundred yards at Monument Basin and then a hundred yards or so at Smethwick Junction. Well, from Smethwick Junction, the new line carves a deep passage through Smethwick Hill. But our route is to the east, following Brindley's route over the hill and through Smethwick Locks. But that is all for another episode. Well, I hope I haven't left you dizzy with all of these loops. But till next time, cheerio and happy hunting. Mm -hmm.